Welcome to the Plant Centered and Thriving Podcast. I'm your host, Ashley Kitchens. Welcome back to the Plant Centered and Thriving Podcast. My name is Ashley, and today I'm here with Tylene, who is from Ontario, Canada, and she loves spending time in the kitchen preparing plant-based meals. She showcases her cooking adventures all on Instagram, so definitely check that out, which we've linked below, and then she'll share what it actually is at the end of this episode, Um, but she went plant-based to feel her best, and she's going to share her story with you today. Day, which I'm really excited for you to hear. So welcome to the show, Tyleen. Uh, thank you so much. I'm really excited to be on. Yes, I'm excited for you to be here. So Tyleen and I, we met via Instagram. So we've known each other for a short time now, but you reached out and we chatted a little bit and we talked about you being on the podcast and it just worked out really, really well. So I'm excited for you to share a little bit about your journey and why you went plant-based and just the value that it's brought your life as well. So before we get into all that exciting stuff. Um, Give us a little background on kind of like what life was like before plant-based and anything else that you would like the listener to know. I've only been plant-based for less than a year now, but before that I was vegetarian and before that I was pescatarian. That was about a year journey there. And my mom is what got me into (laughs) plant-based eating and she's plant-based as well so she has taught me a lot but ever since I was young I would experience stomach aches all my life and I never really knew what it was from and we went to the doctor and they would just say oh maybe she's allergic to something like my digestion wasn't great and I would also after eating I would feel low energy like my energy levels would drop after eating, which, you know, and food's supposed to energize you. So. Right. Yeah. That's not helpful. That's like the opposite of what you want. So fast forward, you're at university. Yeah. I went to university for engineering and we have co-op. I did co-op. So. Oh yeah. Okay. So you were having sort of all these issues and you were feeling sluggish after you were eating. I'm, I'm guessing GI issues were still going on to some extent. Yeah, it never stopped until I went plant-based. How did that process go? Obviously, your mom was a big part of the transition, but what made you actually start taking those steps? Because that can be hard. And there are a lot of people listening who are in a similar situation to you. They're just, they don't feel really well, or they're really, really new to plant-based eating um, and are still trying to navigate it and figure it out. But what were some of those like first steps that you started to take once you you know started going plant-based? It was difficult for me too, because I lived on campus, so there's not many options at all, but I was interested in the options they had, so I made do, and it excited me. Just in the last, like, year or two, I've really noticed, like, plant-based eating, vegan, it's become more popular, and I started noticing more people doing it, and I got interested in it. I saw more options coming about like on campus. So I was gravitating to those and I was just liked how it made me feel compared to eating something with dairy in it. Yeah, it was difficult at first, especially in the university because I was really busy and I think plant-based eating can be easy, but I went plant-based very slowly. So when I, I did it conveniently, to get through school, I started pescatarian, then vegetarian. And then during my last year of school, when actually classes went online, I had more time at home. So I could cook in the kitchen more and I really enjoyed that. So that's when I full on started to just cook plant-based and eat plant-based. And it's really worked out well for me. It's the best diet for me. That's what I say. Yeah. That's a great way to put it. And that's the best diet for you because clearly you've noticed such a difference in going plant-based. And I like to Tylene that you talk about how you transitioned pretty slowly. It was kind of a step-by-step process for you. Yeah. It took me like at least a year to fully go plant-based. What kind of difficulties came up as you started? Well, I missed cheese. (laughs) Oh, yes. Uh, Cheese was the hardest thing. My boyfriend and I, we would have pizza like 
almost every Monday night. Here, Monday nights is like pizza night at Domino's, it's 50% off. So we would get it and then I would feel terrible for like the whole week. Mm. But now I see pizza and I'm not tempted at all. It, but at the start I was. So that's really cool that after you don't eat it for a while, it just, you don't really care about it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. It's true. It's amazing how that happens when initially it's like, because I'm sure you've heard this so many times and I'm sure the listener has as well as like, I can never give up cheese or I can never go vegan or plant-based because I love cheese or I love this. But it's amazing when you make that deeper connection of what it is that you're eating and how you're feeling, especially if you've had GI issues or you feel sluggish after you eat for so long, after a while, after not having Domino's pizza on Mondays, you're like, oh, I actually feel a lot better or my week is so much better. Yeah, it's so worth it. An instance at work today, they brought in some food. There's like cabbage rolls and pierogies and it wasn't vegan. And my boss is like, oh, Tylene, you're probably feeling like so tempted. And it's like, no, I really don't care. Like I, I have no tempt at all. I ate my lunch and I'm fulfilled. That's such a good word too. Cause when you're fulfilled by what you're doing, by what you're eating and when, when your approach to plant-based eating is aligned with you, then you don't have the desire to eat those foods. So someone else might think, Oh, poor, you know, poor Tylene, she feels left out, but you're like, actually, no, I'm, I'm great. Yeah. So in transitioning to plant-based, obviously you feel a lot better. Like what other things have you noticed in just being more plant-based? And then two, in addition to that, how, how have things changed with there just being more op- options in general, plant-based options? How has that changed kind of how you grocery shop and meal plan and cook and all those great things? At the beginning, I don't think I was eating enough mm-hmm. because I was um, used to eating portions when with meat and dairy and it's different when you're eating plants. Like that's a struggle I think I had when I was starting. I I did lose some weight and then I realized I need to start eating more. Mm-hmm. And now I think I'm at a really good spot. I've learned a lot. I know a lot of recipes and but there's a lot more to learn. I I got an instant pot for Christmas. And yes, yes. Yeah, that's what was just beeping. I don't know if you could hear it. I'm good. good. Yeah, <laughs> that's great. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I mean, you're able to, it's a much different experience when you have a plate full of Domino's pizza or pizza in general, or something that actually like truly makes you feel good. Like, because you've made that connection with what you're putting into your body and how you're feeling, you can eat this big bowl of rice and beans and veggies and whatever you're putting in it, whatever's in your instant pot right now and, and feel good and feel satisfied and feel fulfilled. Like you said, which I think is such a great word. Yeah, I love it. As you were transitioning and for people listening, because there are a lot of new plant-based eaters who listen to this podcast, what kind of advice would you have for yourself that would also even help them? Like if you could go back and tell yourself a few things, because I love what you said earlier in that, like you're still learning, you've learned so much, but there's still so much more to learn. And I think especially for the listener who's listening is that don't get discouraged, especially in the beginning, because it is, I mean, this is new to anybody who wasn't raised plant-based or raised around plant-based people. This is a really new and different way of eating. And it's going to come with some challenges, especially in the beginning, but the more you do it, kind of like what Tylene said, the better you're going to get, the more you're going to learn, the more you're going to be able to adapt. And here, she just got an instant pot and, you know, she's using it now. So a lot of exciting stuff there, but my question was, what advice would you have for yourself, basically, as you were transitioning, which would also help the listener? For me, honestly, is eating more. I think I was influenced a lot by social media because when I, like I was saying, over the past year or two, I was learning about plant-based eating a lot more, and that's where I was seeing it a lot, is social media, like what I eat in a day and it would be like a green smoothie and salad. And oh yeah. So it, it definitely influences you, yes. but you need to do what is best for your body. Yeah. I just didn't need enough. <laughs> yeah. Well, and I think that's something great to highlight because especially when we're first going plant-based, 
that's almost like what we think of when we think of plant-based, like green smoothies and salads. And oftentimes we see that a lot on social media. People are drinking their green smoothies or eating their salads because they're vegan. But, and I'm sure you've experienced this, there are so many different dishes that you can make. There's so much variety that you can have. There's just this massive abundance of ingredients and meals that you can make, but it's hard again, when you're first starting out, you're like, well, I guess I'll just have a green smoothie and a salad. Cause that's what we think of, especially coming from sort of like the standard American diet. But how did you start incorporating maybe more variety or more just different ingredients into your diet as you went along? There was probably like a two month period where I was in university and was plant-based and that was just busy. And then when I got out of university, I had more time. So I could spend a little bit more time in the kitchen and experiment with things. Personally, I think there's so many options for plant-based eating because I really like beans. Most people just think we eat tofu for protein. You go to the grocery store and there's just a wall of beans, like all these different kinds of beans. So there's so much variety and you can do pretty much anything with beans, like make burgers with it, put them in soup, make desserts even so that's that's true (laughs) black bean brownies are a thing (laughs) what what kind of got you to like branching out to new cookbooks or new recipes like what 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 kind of helped boost your confidence I guess in a way to like explore new recipes obviously time was a big factor but what were some other things I wanted to dig into new recipes and it's really fun for me to try new recipes I really like Dr. Michael Greger and I learned he's a plant-based doctor and I learn a lot of health tips from him. And when I hear something from him, I'll want to incorporate that more in my diet. So, and that might be something that I didn't really incorporate before, like turmeric and trying more recipes with turmeric in it. Just things like that, learning as I go. And if I learn about something that has health benefits, I'll just Google like turmeric recipes and see what comes up. Yeah, that's such a great tip, especially for people who are kind of overwhelmed with finding recipes or different things like that. Like if there's a specific ingredient you want to try, you know, use that ingredient in your Google search or whatever, and who knows what will come up. So that's that's a great, great idea, like plant-based turmeric recipes or and yeah. goodness, the options will be massive. And I like that you mentioned Dr. Gregor too, because it's helpful to have, especially when you're newer to plant-based eating, kind of a trusted source to go to. Um, and there are a lot of great plant-based doctors out there and all of them aren't going to resonate with you, the listener, but it's helpful to find one that, you know, you respect and kind of jive with and kind of use them as a kind of a, just yeah, a go-to resource to help, help kind of fuel your plant-based journey. Yeah, he's very resourceful. He has all the knowledge about plant-based eating. I like his personality. He's fun to listen to. Mm -hmm. He is, yeah. Yeah, his website, nutritionfacts.org. I definitely go to that a lot because the research is just, it's so sound and there's so much, he puts so much energy and effort into it. I mean, he's got a great team behind him. So it's, it's a great resource and he's, yeah, he's puts out a lot of good stuff. Yeah. He even has an app now, Daily Dozen. Yes. I've seen that. Yep. It's pretty cool. It's like a checklist of things, like things to eat throughout Mm -hmm. the day, what he aims for. Yeah. Yeah. Which is nice. So how did this last holiday season go for you with like family Um, pressure? Was it okay? It's annoying. It's always there. Like, they're like, why don't you just have a little bit like that happened this Christmas? And it's like, you don't have to say that I'm like I don't want to I just try and put the food on my plate that I eat and hope that they don't ask questions yeah family pressure is real and it's hard like thank goodness your your mom is also plant-based but still like if she wasn't I mean you kind of be on your own and it's a struggle especially when you get together for holiday meals you know when meat and dairy that's a big part of the tradition of trying to kind of quote, stand your ground and, and continue doing what you feel is best for you. I got more than once the comment, like you used to like this so much. Why don't you just have some? And it's like, yeah, I used to like it, but I didn't like how it, what it did to my body. Cause that would be 
for instance, I used to, my grandma girl at Christmas dinner, she has cheese curds at the table. And I used to load up my mashed potatoes with cheese curds and gravy. <laughs> <laughs> and they remember that and they say like, yo, you used to love this. Like, why don't you do it? But if I did it, I would just feel terrible for the next couple of days. I would be constipated, like, and that's so uncomfortable. It makes me feel low in confidence because I feel bloated yeah. and just uncomfortable in general. It just it doesn't serve me well. So <laughs> yeah, I got that comment a few times and I didn't really know how to react to it. I probably could have been better. I just kind of avoided it. I just kind of dodged it. Yeah. Well, and we talk about that on the podcast as well. It was like how to respond to type like these types of comments and questioning and really in those situations, like you just have to do what's best for you in the moment. And right now, especially because gosh, Tylene, you're, you're new to plant-based eating. Like this was probably, I mean, your first like fully plant-based, I would guess like holiday meal um, ish holiday season, maybe. And really, you know, you maybe avoiding the conversation or just being like, well, you know, I'm not going to engage in this type of conversation. That's great. Cause again, you've got to do what's best for you. And everyone responds differently when they're asked questions and have comments thrown at them. Yeah. It's difficult, but I'll learn how to answer them over time and just to stand my ground and be confident in my answer and just try not to have feelings about their judgment if yeah there yeah yeah because it's so much more about them than it is about you well you mentioned constipation and that's what sucked me into wanting to have you on the podcast because I also <laughs> experienced chronic constipation for like 20 plus years and oh. that's going plant-based that completely changed my life from that perspective and so I like that you touched on that because I know that you had said um offline and and in our dms that constipation was obviously a big part of your journey. Like after a, a Domino's pizza, things didn't look so good. Yeah. I couldn't go to washroom for like five days and that's just really uncomfortable. Yes. And I, I feel like there are a lot of people out there that experience the same thing. It's probably more normal. Um, but yeah, that's the biggest thing that's changed for me going plant-based to be honest is good digestion, how it should be. That energy and no stomach aches. Mm, yes. Yes. All great things. All great things yes. to not, to no longer experience anymore. Yeah. So Tylene, I was also going to ask you, cause we were talking about this offline and that the research behind plant-based eating was also really important to you as well. Like kind of, as you were transitioning, I know like a lot of things popped up that really sort of reaffirmed why you were doing what you were doing, not only immediately how you felt, but also to sort of long-term, um, if you want to touch on that a little bit. Yeah. So I want to live a long and happy life. I don't want to be sick because I've seen the struggles of that. And I've had a lot of cancer in my family. And I know that from research that plant-based it decreases your chances of getting cancer and heart disease. So I want to live a long and healthy life. So I liked the research behind plant-based eating and the decreased cancer rates and heart disease. So I did it for that. And also aging, like plant-based eating is good for aging. And it's like, free Botox. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. <laughs> yes. Oh my goodness. It's so true. <laughs> it's true. Like exactly what you're talking about. There's obviously like tons of research out there to support that there are so many health benefits to eating plant-based. And even with longevity, when we look at the blue zones, you know, these pockets of people throughout the world who live to be the longest, one of the main things that ties them all together is eating a predominantly plant-based diet. And these people are living to be well over hundred, you know, pretty, pretty frequently. So it's pretty incredible just to see what plant-based eating can do immediately. Like Tylene has experienced, like I've experienced, maybe you've experienced it as well, listening, but also to what it can do for you long-term it, in a way it puts the power, the control kind of in your hands in a little, in, in a way. Mm -hmm. And I want to 
years from now, when I have kids, I want to have healthy kids. And I, of course, I want the best for myself and my family in the future. Yes. What a beautiful way to end it is that you're doing this because you believe it is the best thing for yourself, your health, and for your future family, which I just think is so cool. And you're right. Even in just like the year that you've been doing it, like so much has changed and it's going to continue to change. And I believe that there are going to be just continue to be more and more options for us, whether it's at a university or whether it's at the grocery store at a restaurant. I mean, it's, I just, I can't wait. So it's really exciting time. Yeah, it is. Wonderful. Well, Tylene, thank you so much for being here. If someone wants to connect with you or follow your fun, exciting food adventures on Instagram, where can they find you? Tylene's underscore plant-based underscore kitchen. And I post all my recipes on there. Yep. She's got some fun recipes on there. So definitely go check her out and see what she's got. And also to Tylene, just thank you for being vulnerable and sharing your story because I know that there are other people because obviously I'm not, your story resonated with me. So thank you for taking the time to share it with the listeners and with me. Thank you so much for having me. Hi. It was really fun for me. Good. I'm so glad. All right. Thanks for being here, everyone. We'll talk to you later. Until next time, keep thriving.